Okay, in this bed, I broadcasted um, some Chinese giant leaf mustard. I mean, look at look at how big. <laughs> um, I usually can never grow them what they look like in the picture, um, but I'm giving this is my first time here in southern Arizona trying this one. Um, I'm always a sucker for exotic things that I haven't grown before. Um, and of course the planting instructions were to sow in place, so got that. Um, spring or fall conditions, and we're in fall. And so um, it sounds wonderful. I'm, I hope we get these. Um, it's supposed to have monstrous leaves reaching three feet long and one and a half feet wide succulent leaves and thick, thick crunchy white midrib. Kind of reminds me, I guess, um, especially my, uh, sweet and mild, um, raw and salads, pickles, stir fry, or steam. So it kind of reminds me of the Chinese cabbage. Not sure if that's the same thing or not. Kind of looks a little similar. Um, not sure, but I got some Chinese cabbage going over there. Um, Dan and I absolutely love Chinese cabbage. I'm hoping there's a lot of different seedlings in here. There's quite a few that do look similar. That right there I know is not. <laughs> so that one can be ruled out. That one way back there looks like uh, cilantro got stuck in here. So I don't know how that happened. Um, but there's not too many popped up. I'm not quite sure exactly how many seeds were supposed to be in here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is a more of an experiment. And so this, this here also does not look like, well, if that is it, these all then are weeds. Um, but that one looks different than everything else in here too. So, um, fingers crossed that we're actually going to get something out of this. There's more popping up on the sides. So, uh, we shall see. Okay, here's one of my cement mixing bins full of potting soil. And uh, last year I had great success planting it full of chard and getting to eat uh, chard all winter long. And so this year I threw in a mix of romaine lettuce and chard. And I'm not even sure either one of these are going to sprout. Um, you know that old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. A lot of cases that is with seeds too. And so this is experiments that I'm doing from stored seeds. They've been stored in a temperature that is um, around 80, 76 to 80 degrees year round. Um, probably not ideal. And so um, if you look at this one, the romaine for 20, 2003 and this one was for 2013 uh, for the shard and so we're going to find out this is 2020 and this um is uh the 17th of november and they're inside my uh greenhouse so we're gonna find out if anything from this old of seeds stored in those conditions will actually sprout i just got back from visiting a friend's garden and I so enjoy visiting other people's places because it gives me inspiration into what directions I want to take next. And one of them is, oh my gosh, these are fresh, or actually dried, but bay laurel um, for cooking, bay leaves, and oh, they smell so much better than what you get in the jars in the grocery store. So. I definitely want to hopefully find a bay laurel to add to my plant collection. And, and these babies in here is my little starter of red wiggler worms. Look at the, look at how rich, rich their soil is that they're in. I cannot wait to get these going. So tomorrow I'm going to be working on the worm bin. Um, so I'm going to take this inside for, I can't wait. I love making soups and stews and using bay. Oh, and spaghetti sauce. And oh, I'm already tasting yum them. Can't wait to try these. Also, um, from my visit with Jay and Les, I came home with this absolutely stunning 
sorrel plant. Um, it's fabulous. She's gorgeous. And so I can't wait to look around um, now that I visited their garden. Um, I can't wait to share some of my things with them because that's what it's all about. Um, sharing, trading, learning, um, getting together with friends um, that have similar interests. And that is what, especially gardening, I just, gardening like really brings people together. And I am so grateful to have this. Thanks, Jane Les. Amanda just shared with me some collard starts and some early green broccoli that doesn't seem to be liking it. They're just not very happy. But this beautiful, this is a marathon broccoli, and that one seems to be pretty happy. So, yeah, she's thinking she might not even try the early green anymore because uh, they're not doing too well. Jay just gave me this for the bees. Another bee water station coming in soon. I went out on a little outing today to my friend's house. Amanda, she's got such a green thumb and she loves sprouting seedlings for me. And so she started, I got some artichokes started here. This one's just awesome. Um, so can't wait to get them in the ground. And I picked up uh, two red and two green cabbages. And so those will get planted here pretty soon. Um, it is November and I've got some uh, nice little cherry tomatoes getting ready here. Probably will have them maybe in the salad tonight. I picked up these from another friend. This is a native um, bush called a turpentine bush and the bees absolutely love it. So, um, going to put this into the pollinator garden. And anybody that knows me knows I love Vitex. And so a friend just gave me this wonderful Vitex. Uh, this is not the same species my dad grows. Um, this is the actual hybrid, I believe. And so it'll be fun to see the difference. Um, the two, um, I've got uh, seeds from my dad, so I, I can't wait to, uh, put both of them kind of side by side and watch the bees on them both. Um, the other one's supposed to be much better nectar source. Meow, we got, what do you want, Bullet? Uh, got some kitties asking for a little extra breakfast. So, all right, I'll get you something. She's working on the Tacoma that I picked up for $3 at the clearance rack. And a little bud in there. It is a great plant. Once you get them established, you can't go wrong with these yellow bells or Tacomas. Oh, walking past my mint. Um, something's eating on the mint plant. Great. Now I gotta find out who the little predator is. Oh boy, this just happened overnight. So yeah, I gotta gonna have to pull that out and keep an eye on it. Of course these things that are broke off like that, that's me. But the leaves that are eaten like that, that's somebody else. I'll have to find out who's eating on that. These squash flowers were wide open this morning. But now the bees have got to squeeze in there. And they are. Let's see if I can do a peekaboo on this poor little bee that I just saw her little butt go in. Oop. Where are you, little girl? Boy, she really dug herself into that thing. Where in the world? There she is. Probably not very happy with me. <laughs> All right, you get to your working. Got some of the uh, ice plants are also blooming out in the garden. It's. I just checked the thermometer when I got home. It's about midday 
what, November 19th or 20th or something like that. And it's 82 degrees out. I noticed that um, one of my wahia, or my native fairy duster, is adding on some new growth, which is really awesome. And there is some tiny, tiny seeds of the spring wildflower mix that was popping up. And there was a lot more here a little while ago. And I'm thinking I might have just found out who the culprit is doing all the damage. And do you, can you see it? These suckers will tear your garden up right there. Grasshopper blends right in, doesn't it? These are from a friend's tree. Check out these gorgeous limes and they smell. Smell that? You smell that? They smell fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So got some limes here. I got some lemons from her, the, her tree the other day. These are Meyer lemons. And so I was thinking some beautiful lemons. And instead of making lemonade, I think what we're going to do is make a honey lemon chicken. <laughs> 